who are darker than blue Are we gonna stand around this town And let what others say come true We're just good for nothing, they all figure A boy's grown up shiftless chick Wait a that's the benefit of our unity. Hundred and twenty-fifth Street and Seventh Avenue was the center of activity among the black street orators. When Malcolm arrived, technically he had no corner. So he established his uh, base, you might say, in front of Elder Mishaw's bookstore. They call Mr. Muhammad a hate teacher because he meets your hate, dope, and alcohol. They call Mr. Muhammad a black supremacist because he teaches you and me not only that we're as good as the white man, but better than the white man. Yes, better than the white man. You are better than the white man. And that's not saying anything. That's not saying, you, have, you know where just to be equal with him. Who is he to be equal with? You look at his skin. You can't compare your skin with his skin. Why, your skin look like gold beside his skin. There was a time when we used to drool in the mouth over white people. We thought they were pretty because we were blind. We were dumb. We couldn't see them as they are. But since the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has come and taught us the religion of Islam, which has cleaned us up and made us so we can see for ourselves, now we can see that old pale thing to look exactly as he looked. Nothing but an old pale thing. He was speaking for a silent mass of black people and saying it out front on the devil's own airwaves. And that was an act of war. When he came off the stage, I jumped off the island, walked up to him. And of course, when I got to him, the bodyguards, you know, moved in front. And he just pushed them away. And I went in front of him and extended my hand uh, and said, um, I liked some of what you said. I didn't agree with what all that you said, but I liked some of what you said. And he looked at me, held my hand in a very gentle fashion and says, one day you will, sister. I would be rather taken by a statement he would make of himself. He would say, I am a part of all I have met. And by that, he meant that all the things he had done in his earlier life had exposed him to things, had taught him skills of one another sort of, all of which had synthesized into the Malcolm who became the spokesman for the nation of Islam. You were born in Omaha, is that right? Yes, sir. And you left, your family left Omaha when you were about one year old? I imagine about a year old. And why did they leave Omaha? Well, to my understanding, uh, the Ku Klux Klan uh, burned down one of their homes in, uh, in, uh, in Omaha. They this, had a lot of this made family. your family feel very unhappy, I'm sure. Well, insecure, if not unhappy. So you must have a somewhat prejudiced point of view, a personally prejudiced point of view. In other words, you cannot look at this in a broad academic sort of way, really. I, 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 I think that's incorrect, because uh, despite the fact that that happened in Omaha, and then when we moved to Lansing, Michigan, our home was burned down again. In fact, my father was killed by the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, and despite all of that, no one was more thoroughly integrated with whites than I. No one has lived more so in the society of whites than I. What is your real name? Malcolm, Malcolm X. Uh, is that your legal name? As far as I'm concerned, it's my legal name. Would you mind telling me what your father's last name was? My father didn't know his last name. My father got his last name from his grandfather, and his grandfather got it from his grandfather, who got it from the slave master. The real names of our people were destroyed well, during slavery. Any, was there any line, uh, any point in, in the uh, genealogy of your family when you did have to use the last name? And if so, what was it? The last name of my forefathers yeah. was taken from them when they were brought to America and made slaves. 
And then the name of the slave master was given, which we refuse. We reject that name today. You mean, you, mean to you won't even tell me what your father's supposed last name was or gifted last name was? I never acknowledge it whatsoever. How did you happen to join the Muslim movement? I was in prison. Uh, I was a very wayward, criminal, backward, illiterate, uneducated, and whatever other negative uh, characteristics you can think of type of person until I heard the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And because of the impact that it had upon me in giving me a desire to reform myself and rehabilitate myself for the first time in my life, and also being able to see the effect that it had upon others, this is what made me accept it. And I noticed that after being uh, exposed to the religious teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, immediately it instilled within me such a high degree of racial pride and racial dignity that I wanted to be somebody. And I realized that I couldn't be anybody by begging uh, the white man for what he had, but that I had to get out here and try and do something for myself or make something out of myself. The first time I recall seeing Malcolm was at the home of my father, Henri Elijah Muhammad. And I saw a thin man, tall man, young man, reddish face. Uh, if he was just meeting you, the first thing you would get from him is a smile. He said, this is Wallace. And uh, I, I, I smiled with him. I was happy to see him because I had heard about him too. And uh, he said, the messenger's son, the messenger's son. And he was just so excited about the messenger. Um, uh, really, it wasn't just seeing Wallace, it was seeing the messenger's son. When Malcolm came out, he was full of fire. He had gotten so full of fire that he got out at the right time in the right place so he could expound. He came to Detroit, he was surprised to find there were such few people in this powerful teaching in his mind. And he says, I'm surprised that you are sitting here in so many empty seats. He said, every time you come out here, he said, this place should be full. And that excited the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. In the early 1950s, the Nation of Islam was unknown in most black communities. Total membership was believed to be no more than 400 people. Malcolm was sent on the road to spread the message. Within two years, he helped organize temples in Boston, Hartford, and Philadelphia. Elijah Muhammad then named Malcolm minister of the most important temple on the East Coast, Harlem's Temple No. 7. Mr. Muhammad knew that Malcolm had the experience, that he knew New York, and he also knew that he was the kind of man, complexion, height, speech, and carriage. All that has to be taken in consideration when you select a man to send before the people. Plus, this is an international city. You got to have your best in New York, and this is why Mr. Muhammad selected him. In 1955, when Elijah Muhammad visited the New York Temple, it was to inspect the work of the ambitious and outspoken young minister who had transformed tiny storefronts along the East Coast into a congregation of thousands. Malcolm X and Elijah Muhammad's message made a whole lot of people feel whole again, human being again. Some of them came out and found a new meaning to their manhood and their womanhood. Had Elijah Muhammad tried to introduce an orthodox form of Arab-oriented Islam, I doubt if he would have attracted 500 people. But he introduced a form of Islam that could communicate with the people he had to deal with. He was the king to those who had no king. He was the messiah to those some people thought unworthy of a messiah. The teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is like uh, nothing I have ever taken. It's a medicine. <laughs> 
Right. You see, right. it's the medicine that has cured me of all my ills. Yes, Because I was a sick man. That's right. <laughs> and uh, when I embraced the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, these teachings cured me of these ills. Right. I'm a well man now. Right. And I yes, feel sir. good. That's right. As long as you stay with the doctor, you continue to Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Right. Uh, what about you, brother? How do you feel about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Honorable Elijah Muhammad is trying to teach all our original people. They are in bad shape. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. Honorable Elijah Muhammad trying to wake them up. Inside Muslim temples, no white people were allowed. Members worked to build a self-sufficient community, founded on strict rules and absolute obedience. The nation set up Muslim schools for its children, teaching mathematics, science, history, and Arabic. Who is the original man? The original man is the Asiatic black man. The masons are all the queens of the planet Earth. Muslim women studied nutrition, child rearing, and guidelines on how to care for their husbands. Muslim men studied parental responsibility, history, and religion. The elite corps, called the Fruit of Islam, was trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat and was expected to protect the temples and to punish any members who spoke out against the messenger. I was surprised when I went into some, a couple of the Muslim families, the faith that they had in Elijah Muhammad and in Malcolm. I asked one father, I said, suppose your son came home one day and told you that he was renouncing the Muslim religion. He said, I would turn him from my door and would never allow him in again. So I asked Malcolm about that. He said, he meant it, and he would do that. And I said, not worry about what happened to his son? No, he wouldn't worry about what happened to him. His allegiance was with Elijah Muhammad. To help expand the nation of Islam, Malcolm created a newspaper, Muhammad Speaks, and persuaded other black newspapers to carry the Messenger's weekly column. His strength was, once he believed in a thing, he would give everything he had to it, all of his energies. He'd work, he'd, he'd become a workaholic. He worked day and night for it. He only required around four hours sleep, and many times not, they wouldn't get that. And you just kind of wonder, how can anybody keep up that kind of a pace? But he did it, day in and day out. Plus, on top of that, he's reading. He's reading papers, keeping up what the news is. Um, he's just uh, a person that's tuned in to life in such a way that he doesn't miss too much of it. At age 32, after devoting five years to building the nation, he sought the approval of Elijah Muhammad to marry sister Betty X, a college-educated member of Harlem's Temple No. 7. In the years that followed, the demands of his ministry allowed little time for his growing family. He sometime, if I could catch him, would have to read to the children. They would always want the story read again so that they would really just wait until he was on the last page and said, read it again, read it again, read it again, you know, and so that he started giving the books different endings. He had a beautiful sense of humor, especially when he was kidding me about pork and whacking me on the back and saying that a decent human being, smart historian. I'm going to give you 99 as a human being, and you stop eating pork, I'm going to give you 100. <laughs> Had a beautiful sense of humor, plus the fact that when you got to know him, he was kind of shy. Malcolm was now in the Nation of Islam's inner circle. Elijah Muhammad's most visible representative. 
He had the messenger's confidence and the loyalty of thousands of Muslims. In a sense, Malcolm had found a father. Elijah Muhammad had found another son. They charged Jesus with sedition. Didn't, didn't they do that? They said he was against Caesar. They said he was discriminating because he told his, his disciples, go not the way of the Gentiles, but rather go to the lost sheep. Go to the people who don't know who they are, who are lost from the knowledge of themselves, and who are strangers in a land that is not theirs. Go to those people. Go to the slaves. Go to the second-class citizens. Go to the ones who are suffering the brunt of Caesar's brutality. And if Jesus were here in America today, he wouldn't be going to the white man. The white man is the oppressor. He would be going to the oppressed. He would be going to the humble. He would be going to the lowly. He would be going to the rejected and the despised. He would be going to the so-called American Negro. On an April night in 1957, a Muslim brother was beaten by New York City police. His skull fractured, Johnson Hinton lay in a back room of a Harlem police station. When word spread that Hinton was dying, Malcolm ordered the Muslims into the streets. Other Harlem residents joined them. The community had endured a long history of police brutality. Many considered the police an occupying force. 28th Precinct was notorious for the prejudice. Naturally, when the people saw us come out there, that was the first time that anyone had marched on the 28th Precinct in protest of something that they felt that wasn't right. I don't know what would have happened in Harlem that night because the atmosphere was not, it was so, uh, as I think the word they use is charged. Well, this atmosphere was explosive. Malcolm demanded medical treatment for Hinton. After a long negotiation, police agreed to send the prisoner to Harlem Hospital. But even then, the Muslims refused to disperse. This uh, sergeant, he came out and tried to chase the Muslims who were standing across the street. And Malcolm came out and told him, you can't do that. He said, they're not going to move for you. Malcolm said, I'll get rid of I'll, I'll send them away. He went out to the front of the station on the first step and just waved his hand, and the people walked away. A police commissioner on the scene remarked, that's too much power for one man to have. Malcolm would later take New York City to court and win the largest police brutality settlement in the city's history. And they realized that any time a person could wave his hand and have uh, a large number of people uh, automatically move away without any conversation that uh, by the same token that same man could wave his hand and cause those people to create uh, some kind of disturbance if he wanted to. I believe from that point on the police department and uh, the political people in New York City uh, began to realize they had uh, a significant force in the city to deal with. Good evening, I'm Mike Wallace. Last week on Newsbeat, our 6.30 news program here on Channel 13, we presented a five-part series which we called The Hate That Hate Produced, a study of the rise of black racism, of a call for black supremacy among a small but growing segment of the American Negro population. We have come to hear and to see the greatest and the wisest this 1959 documentary was the first television portrayal of the internal activities of the Nation of Islam. Malcolm saw the television program as an opportunity. Elijah Muhammad was against it. Mr. Muhammad told Malcolm, no, it wasn't going to do any good. All it would do is hurt us in our work and what we were trying to do. Malcolm wasn't satisfied. He didn't insist, but he uh, 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 to continue to 
asked Mr. Muhammad, could he do it? Mr. Muhammad reluctantly agreed. I charged the white man with being the greatest liar on earth. I charged the white man, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, with being the greatest murderer on earth. I charged the white man with being the greatest adulterer on earth. So therefore... Here was this auditorium overflowing thousands of people about an organization I knew nothing about. I found it difficult to credit when I saw it. And of course, when we put it on the air, New Yorkers, because that's all who saw it, were stunned that this, there was this organization, the black Muslims, about which white New Yorkers simply knew nothing. Minister Malcolm X, as he addresses a non-Muslim audience. How could so few white people rule so many black people? This is the thing you should want to know. How could so few? The white man today will tell you that thousands of years ago, the black man in Africa was living in palaces. The black man in Africa was wearing silk. The black man in Africa was cooking and seasoning his food. The black man in Africa had mastered the arts and the sciences. He knew the, the course of the stars and the universe before the man up in Europe knew that the earth wasn't flat. Is that right or wrong? While the documentary helped bring in new converts, the racial views of the Nation of Islam shocked white America and many in the black community. Preaching of racial hatred and racial advantage and the bigotry in, involved is a bad thing whether it's colored or white. Now, for years the NAACP has been opposed to white extremists preaching hatred of Negro people and we are equally opposed to Negro extremists preaching against white people simply for the sake of whiteness. Most in the civil rights movement believed that integration was the way to solve America's racial problems. But Malcolm preached that black people were able to solve their own problems without the help of whites. At a time when black Americans began identifying with freedom movements in Africa and Latin America, Malcolm developed alliances with revolutionary leaders from around the world. He encouraged black Americans to see themselves not as a minority, but as a part of a world majority. The rise of African nations concurrent with the spread of the nation of Islam and the civil rights movement gave black America a burst of pride over and above anything they had had since the decline of the movement of Marcus Garvey. They're passing the basket to the crowd, and I don't. I think everybody standing here should put one dollar in that basket. Don't you think you should? Yeah. Sure. These are freedom dollars, brother. We're not asking you to give us some money to make us rich. We put up businesses. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has set up more businesses than any black man in America. The Nation of Islam, with its interlocking corporations, was now reputed to be the largest black-owned business empire in the United States. The Nation of Islam, during the early 60s, was perhaps enjoying uh, its best days. We were opening restaurants and grocery stores and seeing Muhammad Speaks paper compete with uh, other black papers. We were seeing Malcolm on television kind of frequently. Uh, we were proud of him. In our opinion, he was doing an excellent job of uh, representing the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam. We were seeing the fruit of Islam now 
not just uh, going through exercises in some small facilities, uh, but we were seeing them in great numbers, hundreds of them on the streets of big cities like Chicago and uh, New York and Los Angeles. On a spring night in 1962, another confrontation. It began as a stop and search of Muslim men delivering dry cleaning. It ended with a full police assault on the Muslim temple. This time, eight men were shot, one police officer and seven Muslims. Temple Secretary Ronald Stokes was dead at the scene. Anyone breaking our temples, we were to defend the temple with our life. The temple is sacred. And those brothers, they acted on what they were taught. We people who are darker than blue Are we gonna stand around this town And let what others say come true We're just good for nothing, they all figure 